Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are back in our fly-by-wire A320 and we're going to be flying the A320 from Tucson International over to Dallas Fort Worth in Texas. Stick around guys because this will be a full flight tutorial so at the very least hopefully you'll learn a few things or at least enjoy the show. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so let's jump right into it because there's going to be quite a bit involved in this flight here. It's quite a long one. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Sim Brief here and we're going to go to the Dispatch System. We're going to create a new flight. Now as far as airline and flight number, that's honestly up to you. You don't have to populate it, but if you like it for, you know, the experience, by all means. And we'll just call this flight uh, 0320. That's original, right? All right, and we are flying out of KTUS, and we're going to KDFW, if memory serves, Fort Worth. We're going to be using the profile for the Fly-By-Wire A320. This can be found on their website. Um, I am using the LIDO layout for the uh, OFP. We're going to set our reserve fuel to 45 minutes for an IFR flight. We have our climb profile. We are going to climb up at uh, 250 knots to 10,000 feet, accelerating to 300 knots. And then by approximately 20-ish thousand feet, we'll be switching over to uh, Mach 0.78 as our cruise profile. However, we'll see if the aircraft actually uh, goes that right. I typically let the MCDU decide how it wants to climb out, truth be told. Um, departure runway is showing 1-1 uh, left as our runway. Let me check the winds. 327 at 1. One one left would be correct, and expected arrival on runway one eight left, depending on winds. Passengers. Um, so the big thing to know about passengers now is that uh, let's see here. Let's do an almost full flight here. One hundred and forty one passengers on board. And the big thing to remember with passengers also is passengers and luggage is all considered part of passengers. So your cargo weight is going to be included in the passenger weight. Freight, that's something completely different. Uh, that is actual freight cargo if you're running like um, a UPS flight, okay? So, moving forward here, zero fuel weight, we're going to leave at auto. I think pretty much everything else we're going to leave as is. The air rack cycle, if you want this to be current and updated, you do need to make sure that you have an active subscription with Navigraph. However, uh, if you do not care about the airway and the airway being current, now keep in mind Microsoft Flight Simulator is typically up to date. If not, it's only a couple weeks behind. Um, but if you don't want that and you want to use SimBrief, I believe it's pre-2003, I think is what it is, the flight plans you'll get, so just keep that in mind. All right, so here we have our route. We are expected to depart on the Burrow 4 uh, to Nochi, um, and then coming in, let's see here, on Booves, it doesn't look like, oh, the Boo 5, there we go. All right, I, that looked like an S there for a second. So Boo 5 is our star. So let's go ahead and generate the OFP. All this looks good. I don't have a problem with any of that. Truth be told, not being a pilot, not, I probably wouldn't recognize one if there was one issue. Okay. So, one of my favorite things to do is do the print view PDF. Now, the cool thing about the Fly-By-Wire A320 is you don't actually have to do this. Uh, simply because of the fact that you have access to this OFP in the aircraft itself. However, I will typically always bring it up and have it on second screen or just have it available in case for any reason I don't feel like swapping back and forth. Alright, so let's see here. Let's uh, drop that guy out of there. And let's get back into our simulator and get the cockpit up and running. All right, so here we are in the cockpit. Let's go ahead and get this show rolling. Again, we have quite a bit to do. So we're going to first come to the overhead panel. Battery 1 on. Battery 2 on. External power if it's available. Fuel pumps will remain off for now. IRS 1. IRS 2. IRS 3. This is the nav system. GPS. Scrolling on down, make sure the evacuation order is set to the captain. Only I decide if you get off my plane. Looking for any white. White indicates off or disconnected. Make sure crew auction supply is turned on. 
Moving our way down, we're not going to do the APU fire test just yet, or the engine test, so we're going to keep moving down. As I said, fuel pump remains off. Looking for any disconnected systems, Gen 1, Gen 2, they should show a fault as the engines are disconnected, or off, excuse me. Pack flow is set to normal. Anti-ice are all set to auto or off. And finally, lights, we're moving down to wing lights on, nav and logo lights on. Dome lights if required. Obviously, wheel lights remain off for now. APU remains off for now. Seatbelt signs will remain off until we are done refueling the aircraft. However, we can turn on the no smoking and no portable devices, as well as arming those emergency exit lights. So, speaking of which, let's move on to fueling the aircraft. Now, there's a couple different ways you can go about fueling the aircraft for the Fly-By-Wire A320. I prefer to simply come down here, go to the fly plaid, give it a little kick. I say fly plaid, plaid every single time it drives me nuts um i think it's just because i want to say flight plan i don't know why okay so if you guys do not know how to set up the sim brief integration please check out any of my previous videos but i will tell you it is very very easy you're going to come here you're going to go to sim options oh disregard aircraft configuration where was it <laughs> you're going to go to one of these places that uh clearly i don't know where it is anymore where are you aircraft configuration sim options Realism. Oh, gosh, there it is. Add suit AOC. Why did I not think about that? It makes perfect sense. Anyway, sim brief, username, pilot ID. So real quick, I said I wasn't going to do this, but I guess I will. So we're going to go to back to uh, simbrief.com for a second. Do, 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 do. Wow. And all you want to do is type in this name right here. Now, this is my screen name, obviously, and you can type that in, and it will give you my last known flight if you choose to go that route. Um, but uh, whatever your username is here, that's what you want to type uh, here in the box here. And then it will auto resolve over to the uh, pilot ID. Once you have that in, you can come back over here to the main page, click from SimBrief. There's our flight plan there, as well as our meet our information at each location. Now, if you do, um, you can see we're set to text. If you switch to icons, notice you get a little bit of a different readout. Um, even the um, barometric pressure here is hectopascals versus if you go to text, you'll get it in the uh, inches. So this is how I prefer to see it. I've gotten really used to seeing anything, or it, you could tell what I was reading there. No valid icon chosen. <laughs> I get real used to seeing the meet our information written out. So now let's move on over to our clipboard and here is the operational flight plan that we discussed earlier that is available and you can just left click and, and scroll. So here there's the same PDF that we uh, showed up on the browser earlier. So it is nice. It's handy here, but I'm sure you guys can come up with a couple different ideas of why it might be handy to have it at another location as well. Stepping over to the fuel page and this brings me to a perfect example. I have it up top, but I'll show you guys here. 18,367 pounds of fuel is what we're looking to put on board today. So we're going to come right over here. What did I say? 18367. Fuel time, you can set that to instant, fast, real, however you want to do it. I am impatient as all heck. So let's just go and fuel the aircraft now. All right, coming back to the main page. Actually, what we're going to do is go back to the OFP. Let's just leave that up. And the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is going to be our route. And now let's step upstairs again and turn on um, the no seatbelt or the seatbelt signs. All right. So while looking at the overhead panel, seatbelt signs on now that the aircraft is fueled. We still don't need those fuel pumps on just yet because now we need to start thinking about um, programming the MCDU. So let's get the uh, MCDU programmed and then we'll set up the cockpit the way we like. All right, so stepping down to the MCDU. By the way, guys, I know I am moving fast. So by all means, if you would like access to a full flight tutorial PDF guide with full screenshots to every single step from cold and dark here in Tucson all the way to cold and dark in Los Angeles, California, please consider joining me on Patreon. One of my uh, few guides, five guides I think that I have up there is in fact the Fly-By-Wire A320. There are a couple things that are a little out of date, but there is nothing critical that would prevent you from completing the flight. Uh, uh, more or less just layout changes and things like that so please consider that if that's something that you are looking for and it absolutely helps out the channel beyond what you guys could possibly think you guys have made so much possible to my patreon subscribers and my youtube viewers you guys really make this amazing
So, with that said, let's go ahead and keep moving. Nice thing about the MCDU, if you click on the screen, you get this, you can see that the MCDU menu lights up and you get the scratch pad. At this point, you can use your keyboard, which is extremely handy. Um, so, let's get into getting the aircraft uh, weights and balance. So, we're gonna go to Atsu, AOC menu, weights and balances, and this is going to be our passengers and cargo. We did the refueling over on the flight pad. Now we're gonna do the, uh, you know board our passengers so what you always want to do here and again this is where it comes in really handy having that uh, configuration with Simbreeze. you can do OFP request hit send and there remember we put in Simbrief 141 passengers today so at this point we'll just hit start boarding now once again <laughs> I hate waiting so one of the many things that you can configure with the wonderful fly-by-wire a320 is the boarding time instant again real fast etc so we have that complete. That's really all we need from here. So at this point, I'm gonna move over to the initialization page. This is initialization A, and we're gonna hit initialization request, again, using the SimBrief integration to populate much of our information. So you can see there's our flight number, there's our destination and, uh, or departure and destination. Here's our cost index. Wow, that's a really small cost index. Could be a little bit of a slower flight. Cruising altitude, flight level 370 today. Goodness gracious. All right, and from here, we're gonna move over to flight plan. And now, you can see that all of our waypoints in between the SID and the STAR are automatically populated. Remember, SID, standard instrument departure, STAR, standard terminal arrival route. When it comes to the SID and the STAR, remember that's what those are is just simply designated routes on how to get in and out of the airspace from air traffic control. The reason why those are not automatically populated into the MCDU when we load up from SimBrief is because a pilot or company can hope for whichever SID and STAR they wish. Okay, however, at the end of the day, it is up to none other than air traffic to control to decide how you get in and out of their airspace. So simply because we hoped for the Burrow 4, if this was a live environment, we may not actually get Burrow 4, uh, you know, uh, Departure and clearance may tell us, I know you wanted Burrow 4, but instead I'm going to give you the uh, Wildcat 3 today. You know what I mean? So that's why that information isn't here already. So let's get it going. So first we're going to select our departure. And we're going to select departure. We are departing from runway 11 left today, which is nice because it's right behind us. And there's our Burrow 4. And we are using the Nochi transition. And you can read it all right here. So we are departing from Tucson using runway 11 left on the Burrow 4, transition point at Nochi. Hit insert. Boom. Done. Now, let's put in our arrival. Now, typically, again, you wouldn't do this probably until you either A, got clearance from the arrival uh, location, or at the very least, you would be ready to change it if necessary. So it's really up to you. I like to just throw it in now and be done with it. So I'm going to do KDFW, arrival. And I believe we were hoping for 1-8 left, if memory serves. Oops, I'm using our PDF view. Uh, yes, runway 1-8 left is what we're hoping for today. And there it is. Let's do the ILS 1-8 left. And the BOOV 5 was, uh, in fact, our uh, star today. No vias. So we're just going to hit insert. Voila. And that is it, my friend. Absolutely easy peasy, pumpkin peasy, cheesy, whatever the phrase is. <laughs> so now that we have the flight plan complete, our next step is we need to figure out. Um, oh, excuse me. Oh, I am. I am a. I am so sorry. I forgot to enter in our transition point. So let me show you guys what I'm looking at for a second here, so that way this makes some context because I bounced around there for a second. But there is our transition point. This is the transition from our flight route. So here's our flight route. So we transition at Nochi from the SID onto the route. And then here we are transitioning from the route onto the star. Okay. So with that being said, as you guys saw, highlighted is geeky. So we're going to throw geeky in there and we are all set to go. So again, transitioning from our route using geeky onto the boo five not using a via onto the approach for ils 18 left so now we can hit insert now the flight plan is complete and now our next step will be to verify the flight plan um, using our uh, nav display so let's get into that 
Okay, in case some people don't know about this one, one of the things that I really do enjoy being able to do is to click on this. You hold right alt till you get that target. Click on the screen and it gives you um, a pop-out window. Now, I'm not going to use the pop-out window because then i got to trace it down. But I did want to show that to a lot of people in case uh, you need to expand it, zoom it, etc. It, it does make things a bit easier. So from this point, what we're going to do is come over here to our rotary here and set it over to plan. And now we're going to step through our flight plan to make sure we have everything. And the easiest way to do that is to zoom in as close as you can. Bring your camera down just a bit. And we're going to use the up arrow here and start stepping through the flight. And there is a flight plan discontinuity right there. So a discontinuity is meaning that the um, aircraft or the flight computer doesn't know how to get from no to ELP. It's missing information. Now, oftentimes what you can do with these in this kind of a situation is we can just delete it. So we're going to hit clear and make sure I'm on the right line here. Yep, third one down. Boom. And there we go. And you can see back up here on the nav display, now the line is complete. So we're going to keep on scrolling through, looking for any more. This actually isn't that bad of a flight. Expecting it to be a little bit longer, but it's really not. It actually looks fairly simple today, which is always a blessing. I won't ever complain about that. Okay, so what do we got? That looks like that's probably the missed approach there. Oh, I just saw another flight plan discontinuity right there. All right, so let's clear that one out again. So clear. Uh, I know what you're wanting. So what it's wanting here is manual input getting f f onto the approach. So we're just going to clear the manual out. Oh, dang it. I didn't hit the clear button. Let's do that again. There we go. Clear. Manual. Okay, so now that the manual entry is missing. We should now be able to clear the flight plan discontinuity. And now you can see what has changed up here. So before we were flying about right here and we would have a manual point. When you see manual like that, it's looking for manual input on what we want to do. What do you want the aircraft to do when it reaches this point to get onto the approach? Because the via that we saw where it said no vias, what that meant was that there wasn't a designated route much like, much like a SID or a STAR, there wasn't a designated transition from the STAR onto the approach. And many airports do have that. So in this particular situation, it wanted manual input on how it wanted us to connect these two locations, the end of the STAR to the beginning of the approach. In this case, by clearing out the manual and then clearing out the discontinuity, you can see it has created this route, and this is the, air, uh, the route the aircraft will fly at that point. Okay, makes it real easy. And at that point, most likely in in real world, I would imagine this is just speculation as I'm not a real world pilot, certainly not a commercial pilot. Uh, speculation here would be that I would imagine those situations you'd get vectored in from air traffic control would be the most likely scenario there. Okay, um, and I imagine that happens regardless anyway. So flight plan is complete. Um, let's go ahead and continue on with the remaining configuration, the MCDU. Then we'll get the rest of the aircraft configured and ready to go. All right, so continuing on with the remaining configuration. So now that we have initialization A complete, we have the uh, flight plan complete, now we're going to move back to the initialization page and go to initialization page B by hitting the right arrow here. So zero fuel weight, zero fuel weight, center of gravity. The aircraft actually can calculate this. So at this point, we're going to tap that button once. You can see the calculations displayed in the scratch pad. Click it again. That will populate it. Now block fuel, what I like to do is simply either A, take our... Uh, take it directly from our flight plan or B you can look up at the upper e or lower ecam and get your fuel page from there We're just going to take it from the flight plan today, and that is going to be our block fuel So that's 18.367 or 18. It's 18,000 pounds uh, But it's 0.36 in this case. We're going to do 18.4. We're going to round up to the Actually, you know what? I'd rather have too much than too little. I'm gonna go 18.3 All right, let those fuel calculations complete Perfect. Now we're going to move over to the performance page. Almost done here, guys. Flap setting. We're going to be using flaps one for takeoff. You'll pretty much always be using flaps one unless you were on a very short and wet runway. Um, or if you were really, really heavy, you might go to flaps two. But for the most part, transition altitude in the United States, always 18,000 feet. But make sure that you change it to whatever it is in your particular uh, region of the world. 
Thrust reduction acceleration altitude. This is the altitude at which the aircraft will slightly pitch nose down. It will reduce thrust from the takeoff power back into the climb position. The aircraft will then begin to accelerate up to climb speed. Once said speed is reached, the aircraft will pick nose up and begin climbing. Engine out acceleration altitude. Again, this is in the event of an uh, uh, engine outage. The aircraft will reach this altitude. Um, pitch nose down again, accelerate, and resume its climb on a single engine. All right, so now let's climb up our flex to temp. This is a D rate setting that is used uh, to calculate the best performance necessary in order to get the aircraft out, off the ground based on your location, outside temperatures. Uh, there's a couple of things that come into play there, I know, but again, not being a real world pilot, I have a, a generalized understanding of it. Uh, again, it derates the engine performance, makes them last longer. You know, it sort of falls under that category. Why use max power if max power isn't needed? Now, I have found, and we'll demonstrate today, for Tucson, every almost every single time that I've ever ran these calculations, um, it's between 64 and 65. So we're just going to go ahead and go 64 today. And that way we can use flex temp. And then we're going to hit our V1s. So V1, the speed at which the aircraft can, or the takeoff can no longer be aborted. This is based on aircraft weight, uh, runway length, things of that nature. So once we hit, reach 132 knots, you must continue the takeoff. This is the point where if you guys watch YouTube videos, you'll typically see pilots at V1. You'll see pilots take their hands off the throttle. That way, in the event of emergency, they don't uh, inadvertently, you know, uh, just react naturally and pull the throttle back and try to stop the aircraft that's why they remove their hands from it so that way they know that even if there's an emergency i have no choice i have to keep going uh, vr this is the rotation speed at which we start pulling the nose back and v2 is the speed at which the aircraft will continue to climb and accelerate even in the event of an engine loss okay so that is it for our performance numbers. We had the flight plan complete. We have all of our initialization data ready to go. We are all set and ready to rock. Uh, radio navigation, we'll see initially you'll have the ILS frequency programmed in for runway 11 left, which is our departure runway. Um, and then as we approach the arrival, the MCDU should automatically reconfigure the radio, uh, the ILS radio for our arriving runway. And we'll see that later on in the video. So other than that, guys, I think we're just about ready to rock and roll. Let's go back to the flight plan page and let's start taking a look at configuring the rest of the aircraft for uh, startup. All right, so now let's take a look at setting up the rest of the cockpit. First thing we need to do is set our rotary back to the arc position, arc or nav, it's your preference. I normally expand out to at least 20 miles at departure and then I'll go further than that as we climb out. Set up our brightness displays. And now a lot of you guys or a lot of pilots will do this when they first jump in. Um, I like to just jump right in and, and get things programmed and then worry about my lights and stuff after I have everything else. Um, in the speed box also, we want to take our V2 speed, 137, add 10 knots. And we're going to throw that up here. So we're looking for 147 up here. Now the aircraft will automatically target one or uh, one uh, three seven there. So actually, what is easier to do too. Is you can take one four seven, put it down the box there, and the aircraft will automatically target it. And then you can just leave this in auto mode. You can see that that changed here. Now to get you guys to understand the plus ten, plus five, etc., whatever it may be. That's typically a company thing. It's really based on the company that you're flying with. Um, now the larger aircraft can go up to all the way plus twenty, I think. Um, that I've seen before, um, 747s, A380s, things of that nature. Um, but really, it, it totally depends on, on the company. There's no rhyme or reason for it other than it just provides a more efficient takeoff. Okay, so uh, let's see what do we got here. Um, let's check our altimeter again. Just going to be on our keyboard. There is no way we are 299 or 2 here. I am calling BS on that, but let's find out. No, we're 3015. Okay, so, and that is not changing. I'm like, I wonder why that doesn't work anymore. The B key doesn't work in the A320. All right, so let's change our altimeter. 3015, not a big deal. There we go. Let's make sure that got set right. 2820 is what we're looking for. This says, brings it in hectopascals, so it always throws me off a little bit. Oh, went a little high. I want to make sure they match. right about there okay all right so altimeters are aligned let's go ahead and start up those fuel pumps 
run our APU fire test. Fire test complete. Turn on the beacon light and start the APU. Groovy. All right, at this point, we're just waiting for the APU to start. Now, again, it depends on what your simulation preference is. For me, when it comes to the transponder, I typically do that after I configure the MCDU. But at this point, we'll simulate our transponder code. Always clear first. And let's say we got 2514. Transponder to auto. Uh, TCAS remains in um, standby for now. We can lock the cockpit door. See the flap is open, indicating the air is being uh, brought in by the APU. There's the N1 percentage or N percentage on the uh, APU, 100%. We should have it ready to go. There's available. APU is now ready. Which is awesome. Flight directors are already on autopilot. Set, set our initial altitude. Initial altitude today is going to be 7,000 feet. We'll line our runway up with the runway heading once we get up there. I find that's the easiest way to do it for me anyway. I'm sure everyone has their own different ways of doing it. Again, depends on your simulation uh, desires and how realistic you want to get with it. I'm sure there's different ways they set it up, but they also have a co-pilot helping. <laughs> so I like to save time. Okay, other than that, let's uh, clear the exterior equipment and we will start getting this aircraft out of here. Okay, we had to take a slight uh, break there. Uh, you know, co-pilot, he had some bad food, made him sick. You guys know how it goes. Sometimes you just can't, uh, you know, can't hold it off. So had to wait for him to get back. And so now we are ready to continue where we left off. So we have initial altitude set. We're waiting on the heading until we reach the runway. Flight plan is complete. MCDU is complete. All information has been programmed to the radios. Barometric pressure is set. APU is on and running fuel pumps are on and active beacon lights set wing lights nav and logo lights are ready to roll no smoking signs are on and no or uh, seat belt signs are on as well emergency exit lights are armed transponder is set on auto flaps are retracted speed brakes are in and disarmed predictive wind shears off weather radar is off TCAS is off we are ready to push back. Let's get out of here, guys. So um, I'm going to keep this pretty simple today. Do, 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 do. Start the push back. Mm-hmm. Just waiting on our tug here. By the way, I don't know what happened with the latest. Oh, you know what? I know why that's not working. Disregard that. And we're actually going to need to do something while I'm thinking about it. Yep. All right. I got to turn some controls on, guys, real quick. I'll be right back. Well, let's do this. So we're going to release that. Uh, well, let's see. Set reverse. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We are cleared for start and push. Parking brake set. Okay. Cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. Parking brakes are released. Commencing push back. You can start the engines in sequence. Yeah, we'll start in the sequence. All right. Push back has begun. Ign our ignition, engine mass switch to ignition, and let's start up engine two. Oops, I didn't mean to close that. Oh no! Fail on my part. Critical piece, there's the APU bleed. Let's try that again, shall we? Hey, look at the engine spinning. That way.
Brake set. Parking brake set. Lowering aircraft. Ground. You may disconnect. Okay, sir. Clear to disconnect. Pin has been removed. See you at the side. Have a good flight. Holding position waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. Had to reset my rudder pedals there. All right, taxi light comes on. We did skip the engine fire test, but to be completely honest with you guys, I do it almost every time. Like I skip it almost every time. I am guilty of that. Uh, let's see here. TCAS can go to. No, nope, wait, not yet. Until we get to the runway. Da, 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 da. Predictive wind shear, that's what I was thinking of. Weather radar, if you choose. Taxi lights are already on. Turn away, turn off. Lights aren't needed. Groovy. We are good to go. APU bleed can now come off. APU can now turn off as well. Good, good. All right, let's do takeoff configuration check. Whoa, what's the matter with you? Why no? Oh, that's full flaps, we don't want that. Goodness gracious. There's flaps one. Let's clear the warnings. There we go. All right, spoilers. Set them to arm. Ignition remains, or engine mesh mode remains in ignition until we're ready for takeoff. Chime the cabin. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. And auto brake set to max. All right, takeoff config complete. Let's get going. Let's release that parking brake. Get that taxi speed below 10 knots before we make our turn. Alright, I like to take this part slow because there's only one of me. But as we take the runway, landing lights come on, nose wheel light to take off, strobe light comes on. TCAS, TARA, and let's see if we make it in time to bring the turn around. There we go. Not too bad. All right.
Verify 50%. And we do have a flex set. So let's set flex. Downward nose pressure until 80 knots. There's 80 knots, releasing that downward pressure. V1 coming down the tape. There's V1, hands off the throttle. Rotate. Positive rate, gear coming up. Be nose up at about three degrees per second. Then managing flight directors. And just so you guys know that I did catch it, the one thing I did forget to do was to set the runway heading on our heading tape. But that's okay because we're in nav mode, so it works out today. But that is something that should have been done. Didn't want you to think I don't catch my mistakes. So now we're waiting for thrust reduction altitude. And there it is. So notice that it's wanting us to pitch down. And we're also going to bring the thrust levers back to the climb position. The aircraft's now accelerating. Notice the S on the speed or on the uh, speed tape. That's our indication when to raise the flaps. right about there flaps coming up and now we're accelerating the climb speed Remember, we're restricted to 250 knots until we breach 10,000 feet. Now, we've reached our altitude initial altitude program, so now we're going to go up to 19,000 feet. Put it back into managed mode with an up arrow on the rotary. And I'm going to do my best to get everything done before time. Notice I haven't engaged the autopilot, so again, this is where... Being a one-man show can be a little difficult with, when doing this. Not going to lie to you on that. The A320 is really challenging to fly during transitions. Meaning, you know, you're, you're turning lights off at, at 10,000 feet. You're setting, you know, altimeters. You're um, doing all the buttons and switches if you want to fly it manually. Now, what does make it really nice is the fact that it's a fly-by-wire aircraft. So that does definitely help significantly. So we're approaching 10,000 feet, we can do a couple things. We're going to disarm the speed brakes, we're going to set our engine master mode back to the normal operation position. Um, by this point, I believe we are passing 10,000, so we're almost at 10,000. There it is, let's call it 10,000. Come upstairs, we're going to disengage our landing lights. Turn the nose wheel light off. Okay. Come back in here. And then try to maintain our flying here. Now it's got us pitching nose down again a little bit here because we are once again we don't want to turn too sharp, freak out the passengers here. But it's got us pitching nose down a little bit again because we've breached 10,000 feet, which means now we can accelerate to our by our clone profile to about 300 knots. So if you look at the speed tape there, it looks like we're going to be climbing at about 290 knots, uh, but then eventually it will start indicating mock, and there's the indication of mock down there at the bottom. So, Simbrief has our target at about Mach 0.78. Uh, was it 78 or 73? It might have been 73. I can't remember exactly what the Mach calculation was on Simbrief. We can look here in a minute. But, uh, not a big deal. But there we go. 
But the A320 is not bad at all to fly manually if you like doing that. It's really not terrible. Um, because of that fly-by-wire system and it's got such great stability when using it, um, it does give you a lot of option when it comes to uh, flying them manually. And they are fun to fly manually, especially once you get to, uh, I would say, right about the time that you're passing your transition altitude, well, in the United States. So right about the time that you're clearing 18,000 feet is when I typically uh, recently, actually that's a recent development, but I've started putting it into uh, autopilot. I used to engage autopilot fairly quickly, um, but uh, now, you know, once you get comfortable with it, just like anything else, and you guys have seen, I'm sure there's a couple things I've missed already. Uh, we missed the alignment of the heading. We missed the APU bleed on the pushback. So, I mean, it happens. And uh, that's what I get for not following a checklist religiously. I really don't. You know, I, I, I definitely operate more on memory than anything. And that's a dangerous way to fly. I certainly wouldn't do that in the real world. Um, but uh, I, don't think, I don't think I'll be ever flying an A320 in the real world. So... You know, sometimes I like to just get in, and a lot of these flights that I do, I do just because I wanted to fly and figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Um, and if you guys learn something, great. You know, but that's why I always point out my mistakes. So that way you guys recognize, hey, this was this should have been done and wasn't. So use very light pressure with the A320 on the uh, control stick, on the side stick. Doesn't require a lot. And then we are coming up on 18,000, almost there here. Passing through 1.7 right now. Just staying with our flight directors. They've done such an amazing job with this aircraft. It is so much fun to fly. Like, it just blows me away. It's so stable, it's so clean. All right, let's bring it back around. And at 18,000, we should get a alert to switch to standard. And there it is. So this guy right here flashing is letting us know we're going to come to our altimeter knob here, or our barometric pressure knob. Go to the down arrow, give it a left click. Ooh, uh, and there we are, right at 18,000 feet. And that's, let's see, what are you yelling at us for? You're yelling at something. Oh, there was just that, huh? All right, let's go ahead and increase our altitude now up to our cruise altitude of 37,000 feet. At this point, we're going to go ahead and engage the autopilot, let her take over. She knows what she's doing far better than we do, so... We'll let her fly it and then do some last uh, minute checks here. Make sure that we're truly set for cruise. All right, so speed brakes are designed. Flaps are retracted. Dark windows locked. Predictive wind shears on. Transponder ticking away. Engine master mode back into the normal position. Auto brakes are disarmed. Cruise altitude is set. Speed is set. Popping up all lights are off. Seat belt signs are still on. No smoking, no portable devices on. We can turn the no portable devices off at this point. We're clear of 10,000 feet. They're free to uh, use all their tools and gadgets. It gets pretty boring sitting back there. So, All right, guys, at this point, the only thing left is we're going to climb all the way up to our cruise altitude. Once we get to cruise altitude, we will come back and start talking about our descent. So I'll catch you guys in just a few. I hope you're enjoying the video. Be sure to check down below and... Uh, Join me on Twitch. I know a lot of people are anti-Twitch. The only reason why I am sticking with Twitch versus streaming live to YouTube is because Twitch is a better platform for you. Um, it, I, it uploads cleaner. Um, there's less issues with the stream itself on Twitch. And my biggest thing is the chat is instant where YouTube is a pretty significant delay to the time that you type a message to the time that we content creators actually see it. So anyway... I'd really appreciate it. Again, check down the link description below. Uh, there is a Twitch link. Please join me, and uh, I'd really love to see you on the stream. All right, my friends. So we are still about 300 miles out, um, but I figured this is a good time to at least get our top of descent taken care of. So I'm going to show you the tool that I use. It makes things real easy for me. Give me just a second here. Where are you? And there's a ton of different ways to do this, guys. There's so many different tools out there. There's so many different options. There's one actually built into the fly pad. I just find this one to be the easiest to use for me. And that is this browser here. Uh, let me see if I can make that a little bigger for you guys. There, there we go. Look at that. Okay. So first, we have our starting altitude. We are up at 37,000 feet. Ending altitude, we can do a couple of different things, but today we'll go ahead and use the touchdown zone elevation for runway 18 left. So ILS, runway 18 left, this is Navigraph here that we're looking at. 
And it may be a little difficult for you guys to see here, but here this says touchstones TDZE, which is touchdown zone elevation, 602 feet. So let's just move that away, and we're going to make, just call it 600, keep it easy. Starting speed, um, indicated airspeed, we are looking at, believe it or not, 256 knots. Uh, well, let's say we're 253 knots about, so we'll just put 253 knots. And then ending airspeed, uh, well, let's see here, by approach speed, we're probably going to be looking at about, we can call it 135 knots, call it good. And we should be descending at about 127 miles before our destination for a 3 degree glide slope at approximately 1,000 feet per minute. Um, you can do your average winds if you want. That's totally up to you. I don't ever dive into that. It's just not worth it to me given um, some of the issues that still exist. And it just, it, it, for simulation, for what I'm looking for, it just, it's sort of overkill for me. See what I did there? Boom. I'm here all week, folks. All right, guys. So that is our um, top of descent. We're looking for 127 miles. So at about 137 miles is uh, when we'll come back and uh, just hang out, chit chat for a couple of minutes just to make sure that we're on point and start the descent on time. All right, guys. So I'll see you in a few. Hey, guys. I figured I'd show you another tool that I use very often while flying the A320. You know, I've got, you know, like most of you, you know, the family, you know, three kids, wife job all that good jazz so very often during the cruise phase you know I, I leave the office and I go out and I start doing things I mean occasionally you guys may even hear the little ones shouting in the background I always call them my passengers but uh, one of the things that's really handy to do is to sort of use the progress page to determine where you're at now it's really important to remember that as we use the progress page the progress page tells us a direct line if we were flying direct to whatever destination we put in but it's still rather helpful gives you a general idea so like we want kdfw for fort worth to dallas texas we're going to throw that up here you can see here in a direct line it's on a bearing of 070 and 162 miles away um you're going to see those miles ticking down pretty fast because i have the sim accelerated but uh, I just wanted to show you guys that because it's something that I use very, very frequently and I thought that you guys might find some use to that. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand how simple it is to use that. You can use this for any waypoint, VOR, doesn't matter. So uh, anyway, thought I'd show that with you guys. All right, friends. Well, it is time to begin our descent. So we're just going to take this all the way down here. Now, I like to start with 10,000 feet and then work my way down as we get close. Just because 10,000 feet, we don't want to breach that before it's time. Um, so it's just a good aiming point. You can see we're about 130 miles or so away. And we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of a head start here. And let's see here. What is our descent mode? We're just going to do managed. And first, the aircraft should slow down to a descent speed. There's the throttles going to idle. And we can also enter in our destination data while we're here. This is perfect timing. So let's come on down here. We're going to hit clear. We're going to go to our performance page. Go to the next phase and the arrival. So we need our weather information for KDFW. So let me grab that. I'll be right back with you guys. Actually, it's dawned on me that I can show you guys. This is the one of the nicer things that has happened. Let's get our meet our information. Select an airport. I don't know if... Yeah, it's not going to be up there yet. Darn it. That's what I was... Well, let's see here. Maybe we can find it. No, it's too far out. All right. So in this, kitchen, in this situation, I just go to Google. So I'm literally just typing in Google KDFW meet our... I can throw that on the screen for you guys real quick. Display capture here. There we go. And let's see what we got. Uh, let me brighten that up for you guys. There we go. All right. So visibility 10, temperature 22, altimeter 3017. So let's get that in there. Get out of here. So we're doing 30.17 on the Q&H. Temperature was 22. Throw that in there. Winds we have... I just saw them, darn it. Uh, 170 at 15. Oof, it's going to be a brutal landing. 170 for 15. The good news is we have the correct runway selected, so we don't have to worry about changing that. Transition altitude set. Um, barometric, let's see here. We're going to need Navigraph here. And let's see here. We're doing... Okay, not sure what happened there. That was weird. 
Okay, so let's see here. Find our minimums. 802 feet. So let's grab that. 802. Throw it up there for our minimums. Okay, and then I found that right here. Okay. Alright guys, so we are all set for our arrival. Doing a con full, con full flaps configuration. So now it's just a matter of waiting until we get down there. So I'll catch you guys in just a bit here. Alright, so real quick here. We've passed through 18,000 feet, so it's time to reset that altimeter. At this point, we're going to go up arrow here. And 3017 is our target here for the barometric pressure at our landing elevation. So, let's go ahead and keep on moving here. We'll be monitoring for 10,000 feet, at which point we'll make sure the aircraft is slowed down to 250 knots. Alright, the other nice thing is the aircraft is monitoring altitude constraints very, very nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and continue us down to the 600 feet. And actually, let's make that 2,600 feet, because what we're going to do is we're going to set our uh, escape altitude for a missed approach. I don't know why I call it escape altitude. been playing DCS too much. All right, I think other than that, just a matter of waiting again. All right, my friends, so we totally made a mistake, and by we, I mean me. I trusted the simulator a little too much and should have paid more attention to Navigraph. I'm going to show you what happened here. So we are just over 7,500 feet here, okay? And before I go any further, we need to arrest that descent. So let's just oh, take it to 7,000. Okay, stop that right there. We also need to get our speed into manual mode. This gets back to 220 knots. No, darn it. I said 7,000. I hate it when it does this. Alright, well, now we're in vertical speed mode. I didn't want it to be in vertical speed mode. So we're going to level off at 6,000 feet. Hey, close my door. Oh, sorry. Close it. Okay, so now, very quickly, let's pause the sim. And let me show you with the mistake that took place. As I said, I put too much faith in the sim on this one and didn't trust my charts or look at my charts. So here's where the aircraft is. Now at DARB, we were probably at 17,000, somewhere around there. So we were busting altitude according to the charts all the way through. And this is why Navigraph charts is very handy or at the very least Googling your approach plates and your star charts. Cause this was an epic fail on my part, epic fail. So we've got our speed locked into 220 knots now. That's what we just did, but we should have been right at 11,000 feet. So now we're going to sit tight at uh, 6,000 feet, and we got to do that for quite a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the approach plate now. Find ILS 18 left again. And let's see where we're supposed to be at here. So do, 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 do. Let's see what we got. So we're going to be coming in from this direction here. Mm, seeing if it's got a alright so we're going to need to be at 4000 by Grooch so we've got a ways to go before we're going to be there so at this point we're going to let the aircraft continue to slow flaps one nope is not acceptable not until 220 darn it I should have known better than that my fault there we go And see, the reason why I make it... Oh, hey, you guys probably like to see the sim. The reason why I like to make sure that I point this kind of stuff out is because I'm a little discombobulated now because I messed myself up. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't I didn't pay attention to what was going on here. So now we're going to double-check a few things while we're here. Uh, let's go to the RadNav page, make sure we have our ILS frequency. We do indeed, 11055. I did verify that on the chart. I'm still looking at it. Um, and here I'll show you. It's right here. There's 11055 for ILS 18 left approach. And that back off. So we got that. We're making sure that's all set. Which is good. I mean, honestly, it wasn't the end of the world. Had I caught this much later, it would have been a little difficult. Because we absolutely were not going to hit our altitude. We would have been so low by the time we hit this Grooch. 
So right here is where we need to make sure that we are at 4,000 feet. I mean, look at this. We still have a ways to go. Was it oh, 30, 40 miles, 30 miles, 35 miles, give or take? So that would have been super bad. So we're very, very low for where we are. I descended much too quickly. That was the other thing. And I did notice that. So when we started our descent, I put it into manage mode and we were descending at about 2,400 feet per minute. Um, had I descended correctly at the 1,000 feet per minute and actually used vertical speed instead of open management, I probably would have been fine. But I didn't and I ignored, I kept telling myself, ah, nah, we'll get there. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it as we descend lower. And I didn't. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Uh, make sure you watch your charts. If you're going to sim it, sim it um, relatively right. And the only reason why I'm pointing out the, this, I know I mentioned certain things for simulation. Meh, certain things are important. This one was important because had I not stopped it soon enough, um, we would have been way, way too low, and it would have absolutely toasted our landing. It, we would have spent the entire approach climbing back up to altitude, burning a ton of fuel, getting back on the glide slope, then reconfiguring for landing while managing our airspeed accordingly. I mean, it would have been a pretty big pain in the butt. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. So anyway, uh, we're on that final leg now. Once we start making the turn on to Grooch, I'll be back with you guys. All right, so a couple things to start preparing for here. Once we get down to 210 knots or so, we're going to start dropping flaps one. We have a reference approach speed of what we're going to be looking for here. Go to the next phase. We're going to be looking for an approach speed of 128 knots and then final touchdown about 123. Typically, it's quite a bit less, but um, gives us a good at least target place to start here. And let's go ahead and move on over here. And we're going to do a couple different things here. We're going to start descending down to 4,000 feet. Let's get that ball rolling there. I'm going to start reducing our speed to 200 knots. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and deploy flaps one. And by the way, I don't know if I caught it in the recording, but we do have landing lights are down, seatbelt signs are rearmed. Let's try them in the cabin. That was an aggressive turn. And let's come down to 180 knots as we come around the corner. Auto brakes, we're going to be using medium auto brakes for our landing today. Set the engine switches back to ignition. Let's go ahead and start up the APU so it's ready for us on landing. That is preference. I don't know if that's real world procedure, if they actually do that or not. It's something I like to do. That way I know the APU is ready when I get to the gate. So simulation steps is what that one is. That's probably not accurate for real world. It's just, I'm, I'm cheating. Call it what it is. <laughs> And then nose wheel light, you also want to make sure it's in the taxi position, not takeoff. So it's takeoff, just for takeoff, and then taxi on landing. Coming down to 4,800 feet, so it's just about time for this to start rocking and rolling here. We're going to bring up the LS frequency here. Acti ILS mode is now activated. Now you can see we have the glide slope indication indicating that we are above it. And uh, obviously la latitude needs to be, uh, or longitude needs to be addressed, so... There's 4,000 feet right as we come around the corner, so just about nailed that one. That one's okay. Such a weird and aggressive way to make that turn, but I guess you do what you got to do. All right, I'm going to arm the spoilers. And at this point, activate the localizer so we start locking up. Activate the approach phase. Confirm activating the approach phase. Excuse me, we are below the glide slope, by the way, not above it. I think I said above earlier. We're going to set our altitude down to 2,000 feet for our escape altitude again for the missed approach. We'll start slowing our speed down to our reference speed of 128 knots, following our flaps as necessary. So from here, we're going to go flaps 2. 
At approximately 8 miles is when we'll drop the landing gear. I'm probably a little early on the flaps, truth be told, even on the approach speed. I could have waited a bit longer. The deal is typically by 10 miles you got flaps 1, 8 miles you got flaps 2, uh, 6 to 5 miles flaps 3 gears down, and then um, full configuration you know, within 4 miles. You can see the glide slopes coming on in here. You know, I'm going to set our speed back up. I really did jump the gun on that, so let's come up a bit. That just seems silly. We'll go to 160 knots. I jumped the gun on that quite a bit. Let's set our range to 10 miles, and basically once the airport comes into view, that's when we'll start uh, doing some work here. I know I'm sort of rushing the end here, guys, and I do apologize. I've had something uh, come up that needs to be addressed. So, By the way, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Hope you're all having a good time with your loved ones at the time of... Uh, hopefully you're watching this after the fact. If you celebrate the holiday. Alright, so we should be acquiring the glide slope here any second. Once we do, the aircraft should take over. Let's go ahead and go into approach mode, otherwise it's not going to do a damn thing. There it goes. There we go. Alright, so we are locked onto the glide slope, which is great. We are now officially 10 nautical miles out. There's our runway right out there. One eight left. Now at nine miles. There's eight miles, flaps two is already in place. We'll go ahead and drop the landing gear. We'll be configured early, but we'll go ahead and set our uh, reference speed. One, two, eight knots, chime the cabin. Flight attendants, please prepare for landing. Flaps three in. And full flaps in configuration. All right, so at this point, we just let her follow the glide slope in. Doing my last checks here, just sweeping up, sweeping down, making sure I didn't miss anything. At the very least, nothing critical. <laughs> I think we're good. Just a matter of landing the beautiful lady now. Let's go ahead and fly around the rest of the way. Whoa, there we go. Not sure what happened there. Come on, stay with me, girl. I don't normally disengage the autopilot quite that far out, but I figured, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do this. We got this, right? 500. Normally that's about when I do it. Get that nose down a bit more. Coming off center line a bit. Bring her back. A little high. Come on, baby. Stay with me. Two hundred. Right, here we go. Minimum. Continuing. One hundred. Throttles up. Forty. Oh. Thirty. Twenty. 
Flaring? Ten. Five. Oh, my reversers didn't deploy. I have to use more wheel brakes than I wanted to. I think I forget. I think I unbound my reversers on accident. I was messing around with some of the control schemes for the A320 the other day, and I think I might have ticked that one off a little bit. So let's see here. We want a taxi here to the left. Make sure we completely clear the active runway. It's better to take up a taxiway than a runway. And we're going to stop right here. And let's clean up our aircraft. So, first thing, flaps come up. Spoilers are disarmed. Make sure auto brake is disengaged. Predictive wind shear can remain on, but TCAS needs to go back to standby. And let's see here. Let's come up top. Yoink. Taxi light remains on. Landing lights obviously need to come off, though. Strobe light also needs to go off as well. And APU is up and running. All right, I think we're good to go, guys. Let's go ahead and get back to our gate. And welcome to Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas. All in all, not a bad flight. So, you know, a couple things that were missed. Obviously, binding my control key for the thrust reversers on landing was a bad move. Busting our altitude on the approach um was terrible uh, terrible 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 move i was really bummed out about that one yep, but that's what i get for not checking the uh, plates always double check with your plates um and then uh let's see here um what else did we do we had a couple of other mistakes i know we did um the apu bleed on pushback engine start again that's a result of not checking your checklist um, but I think that was, I think those were the real big ones. Um, I think I might have missed another one here and there, but I think that might have just been procedural differences. Um, but anyway, so I really hope that you guys at least find these videos useful. I hope that, uh, yo, come on, baby, turn. I'm using my rudder pedals with shoes on. I don't know how many of you guys are like me. I can't do it. Every time that I try to use, uh put my feet on with rudder pedals or my feet on my shoes on with rudder pedals i have the most awful time doing it but uh anyway guys so at this point we'll just taxi to the gate and shut the aircraft down my frame rates are tanking which i'm sure you're probably being witness to um so in that case i think i'm just going to go ahead and stop the video here i'm not sure why they are tanking but they have dropped probably by a good 80 percent um, so I don't know if the card's getting mad or what's going on with the simulator, but anyway, I don't want you guys to be a part of that. So be sure to like and subscribe, guys, if you enjoyed the content. Again, please be sure to follow me on Twitch for the live streams. It really does help me out, and I promise that you'll like the experience a whole lot better than watching lives on YouTube, um, at the, at least at this current juncture. Um, and, uh, as always, guys, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in that next one.